Galileo was born into a world where each morning reaffirmed the common view that the sun moved around the earth. This belief was confirmed as the sun appeared to pass overhead each day. From ancient times, astronomers had tried to account for the observed motions of heavenly bodies by assuming that they were attached to transparent crystal spheres, rotating sphere within sphere. The Greek astronomer Ptolemy worked out the system in great detail to explain the motions of the sun, the moon, the stars and the planets, all that could be seen with the naked eye. At the center of Ptolemy's intricate system sat the Earth, solid and unmoving. The Ptolemaic system was filled with ingenious geometrical devices. It made it possible for people to compute where the planets were to be, and this was useful, let us say, uh, for astrology. Uh, it was useful if you just wanted to keep track of where things were in the sky. But it wasn't perfect. Sixty years before the telescope, a Polish clergyman, Nicholas Copernicus, noticed that the calculations needed to predict the positions of the planets in the sky would be simplified if he assumed that the sun, rather than the earth, were at the center of the universe. For decades after his book, most astronomers simply suspended judgment. The reason was that there was no observational evidence that the earth moved. In fact, it seemed almost silly that the earth moved. In the Copernican system, the Earth was never still. It had two separate motions, revolving around the Sun each year and spinning on its axis once each day. The thing that Copernicus suggested just made him really the laughing stock of Europe because he was saying here is the Earth is actually whizzing round at a huge speed, about seven or eight hundred miles an hour. That's just going round on its axis. And in addition, it's going round the sun at about 30 miles a second. I mean, they were saying this is just absolutely ridiculous. I mean, look at the ground. It's as solid as you can see. Clearly, the Earth is not moving. Nothing could be more obvious than the fact that the Earth isn't moving. If it was moving, everything would be flying off it. I mean, church steeples would fall down, birds couldn't keep up with it, clouds would go disappearing over the western horizon and things like this. Galileo had read Copernicus and already suspected that the Copernican system was correct. But even with his telescope, he did not see a way of proving that the Earth moved around the sun. For him, Demonstration was the mark of science. For something to count as a scientific claim, it had to be demonstrated. It had to be conclusively shown to be the case. Anything short of that was called conjecture or opinion. While he searched for a demonstration, a letter arrived from one of his followers, Benedetto Castelli, suggesting that the planet Venus could hold the key. My dear Galileo, if Copernicus is correct, and Venus revolves around the Sun rather than the Earth, it is clear that she would be seen not unlike the phases of the Moon, sometimes as crescent and sometimes not. Pray tell me, if with your wonderful telescopes you have noticed such an appearance? To the naked eye, Venus was just a point of light, but through his telescope, Galileo saw the planet as a disk. Over a period of months, Venus changed from a small disk to a larger crescent. Galileo immediately grasped that in a sun-centered system, this crescent would appear as Venus circled in an orbit between the sun and the earth. Venus must be revolving around the sun rather than the earth. Years later, Galileo finished his great book. It was called Dialogue on the Two Chief Systems of the World. It is a debate about the world systems. Is the sun the center of the universe? Or is the earth the center of the universe? I always think that his dialogue on the two great world systems was the persuasive book that made it intellectually respectable to believe in a moving world a sun-centered universe. It was the book that won the war. <laughs>